First, though, let's go live to the Northern Territory Chief Minister, Natasha Files. She's speaking to our Northern Australia correspondent, Matt Cunningham, in Alice Springs. Thanks, uh, Kieran. Chief Minister, thanks for joining us. Uh, just speaking to locals on the ground here today, a lot of them are saying they've never seen crime worse than it is at the moment in Alice Springs. Has, has your government lost control of this situation? So Alice Springs is an important part of the Northern Territory and I have visited regularly and continue to do so. I'm here today listening to the community. I feel their frustration, their anger, uh, and we're working together to solve these issues. What do you think is driving the crime, the increase in crime that we're seeing here in Alice Springs? So it's a multifaceted issue. It's generational change. It's making sure that we've got functional remote communities and it's ensuring that we do manage alcohol, which is a legal product, but does does cause so much harm. Well, one thing a lot of people are saying has had a major impact, we've even heard the police commissioner say it today, uh, is uh, the return of alcohol to some of those Indigenous communities, but more importantly to town camps here in Alice Springs since uh, the sunsetting of the Stronger Futures legislation. Your, your government's been pretty clear you're not going to change your mind about this decision. Why not? So the previous coalition government turned its back. For decade, for a decade, alcohol management plans sat on senators' desks in Canberra. They did not listen to the community. What we have got in the Northern Territory is some of the strictest alcohol policies in the world, and we will continue to work in that space. We'll continue to work with local communities around how they want what is a legal product, but acknowledging the harm it caused, managed in their community. You do have those alcohol policies. You've been the alcohol policy minister for more than six years. You introduced a ban drinker register, you've got police standing on bottle shops, you've got a floor price for alcohol. I think that's why people can't understand why you won't change your mind on this. We, we had John Boffer on this program yesterday saying that if that happened tomorrow, we would see a, an instant turnaround in the issues we're seeing in Alice Springs. Why won't you listen to those health experts and change your mind on this? So we've put in place the measures that we can. As I said, it was that previous coalition government that just simply sat and did nothing. We've put in place measures. We continue to do so. There is the ability for remote communities to opt in, but there is also the ability to restrict the supply to those that cause harm, remembering it is a legal product right across Australia. And I think that's the other people don't think people don't quite understand, that there's the option to opt in um, to remain dry. Um, but these alcohol management plans were put in place. Why, why didn't you do it the other way around? Why didn't you make it an opt-out system so that uh, come July 17 last year, those communities remain dry, and if then they wanted to have alcohol, they could make an application, um, put an alcohol management plan in place, and then alcohol could perhaps be used responsibly in a community like that. Instead, locals here are saying you, you've just turned the tap on overnight and the result's been carnage. So we put in place a measure that is not race-based. The intervention, which is what the Stronger Futures legislation was, disempowered Aboriginal people based on their race. So in the Northern Territory, if you live on one street, you couldn't have alcohol. Yet a street away, because that was not an Aboriginal community living area, you could have a drink. We have a number of policies. I acknowledge absolutely how difficult the issue is and that's why I've kept that portfolio as Chief Minister, but we will have measures that are across the community that reduce the supply and reduce the harm. There's, there's Aboriginal people, though, who are calling for this to be undone. Marion Scrimger, in her maiden speech to Parliament, the first thing she said was that Stronger Futures, the, the return of alcohol to those communities, was going to be devastating. This week, again, she's calling for a change in that position. Why, why aren't you listening to her? She, she's the Aboriginal MP on the ground here in Alice Springs. Why isn't her voice being heard? Absolutely, we're listening to all members of the community, particularly Marion Scrimshaw, who represents us in the Northern Territory Parliament, but people uh, out of the Northern Territory need to understand the context. We have some of the most strictest alcohol supply measures. We will continue to work in that space, but we will not have a race-based policy that disempowers Aboriginal Territorians. John, John Boffer also made the point that this was positive discrimination. He says, just like we have quotas, the Labor Party has quotas to get more women uh, into the Parliament. This was a, a positive discrimination that was having a, a beneficial effect for Aboriginal people, uh, particularly here in Alice Springs. So are you not listening to those sort of concerns? We absolutely Absolutely, are listening right across the community. That's why I'm here in Central Australia, listening to the community. I absolutely acknowledge the pain, the frustration, the anger of the community right now, uh, and we're working with the Commonwealth Government and the Town Council so that we can have.
have measures, not in, just in Alice Springs, but right across the Central Australian community. Matt, these issues are multifaceted. They are decades of disempowerment, of removing services from Aboriginal community, uh, and we absolutely get the sense of urgency to resolve these issues for a safer community. The other thing we've heard today from the Police Commissioner, we've heard it from others in the past, was the impact of the doubling of welfare payments of early access to superannuation under the former Morrison government. Uh, has that had a big impact, do you think, uh, on the crime that we're seeing now? We certainly saw a change in our statistics when COVID or during COVID. Initially, it was a significant decrease and then we have seen a change. We need to be careful, though. We need to make sure that people have the resources to feed their family, to get their children to school. And so this is about identifying the issues and community-led solutions tailored to, each, tailored to each community. The Mayor has called for the Australian Defence Force or the Australian Federal Police to come here. Do, do you have enough police on the ground here in Alice Springs um, or do you need that federal, federal assistance? The Northern Territory Government will continue to work with the Commonwealth, but we have the police in the Northern Territory. We have the resources. We need to talk to the Commonwealth Government about needs-based funding for certain services, but I don't believe we need uh, federal intervention from police or the military. So you have enough police here in Alice Springs at the moment? We put in place extra police leading into the Christmas period. I've met with police here in Alice Springs today. They're as frustrated as I am, but we won't give up. We will continue to work on the solutions, but I believe those solutions are within the Northern Territory, not from the military coming in into the Territory. We spoke to Steve Edgerton today from Tennant Creek. Obviously, he was the mayor there in 2018 when Malcolm Turnbull visited. Um, he's raised concerns that when more police are sent to Alice Springs, there are fewer police in Tennant Creek. Uh, is that, uh, are you opening up problems in other parts of the Territory when you have to uh, bring a whole heap of police here to Alice Springs? Well, let me be clear. We can't police our way out of these problems. They are a part of it in keeping the community safe and the community supported. But we need to focus on those issues that I touched upon around services in remote communities around making sure that we support families, that when we have children that are doing the wrong thing, that we empower that family to care for that child, that we do not simply remove them and create another generation of problems within our community. So, 